Hi everyone, welcome to Naughty Yarnies. My name is Barb. Sorry, I'm just changing it because I forgot to dim my light over there. And I don't want you to be having issues with the brightness of that. So, welcome to my channel. Today I have a video of all the different cotton yarns that I have dyed over the last few weeks. I've had quite a bit of interest in people wanting to know how I did them. I did not, however, record how I did them all. Um, I know I did some with avocado and things. I'm not going to show those because I did actually do a video that one weekend where I showed how to do that. So I will upload that at one point. Um, but I'm going to show you all the others and the colors and, oh my goodness, what you could maybe, some ideas of what you could do with these yarns and yeah so I'm just kind of gonna go with the flow so let's see what happens um I have made a couple of things with some of it so some I can't show one of them is the present day um crochet test crochet that I did for Kayla Osborne and I can't show it quite yet so hopefully by my next podcast, I'll be able to show it because I'm using some of this hand-dyed cotton yarn in the sweater that I made for her. It turned out lovely, like really, really lovely. So I'm in all of these, so I don't have to explain each and every skein, Hank, whatever you'd like to call them. I use just Handicrafter yarn, number four weight. 100 grams it's 180 yards per hank i skeined up on my skein machine and i weighed and all that jazz um yeah it's not the like real expensive type yarn i mean you could make a garment like i said i made a sweater with it it is possible it's not the most softest cotton it's like dishcloth cotton but I mean, once it's washed and you treat it with some maybe fabric softener, it softens up quite a bit. So you can make things like beautiful, but imagine having hand dyed bags or the towel toppers, um, slippers, um, just whatever you use your cotton for, just amazing. So I have so many things that I want to make with it all because of the colors it's just cotton colors are so limited really so this way you could make your own colors you could speckle it you can make it variegated striped whatever you like so i'm about to tell you and show you all the different ones i've dyed up so here we go you've seen this this first one on my podcast if you watched the, the last podcast maybe the last one or the one before it. These ones here, these are um, uh, what I called le the lemonade color, pink lemonade and lemonade. And these are you made using tie dye. So with this skein, what I did was I laid out some saran wrap on my countertop, like lengthwise. I had the skeins already wound into skein form so they're six foot skeins wrapped around then I um, put uh, water in with the powder for the tie dye and then I began to just kind of put little sections so I used green red and yellow and I put little sections, so I did, took, started with the, actually no, I used green, red, did I say green, red, and yellow? I hope so, because that's what I used. So I started with the red, and I did little sections, and I kept them quite a few inches apart, like about eight inches apart, the stripes, and then I, because I knew they would bleed into each other, so like I put the, when I put the yellow, and when it was touching the red, it turned to orange. So I have some orange sections. And then when the green was mixed with the red, it, it turned a different shade of kind of pinky red. So all different shades became of it. So there's lots of different shades in that. And after I did all that, like there was maybe a section of about an inch between each colors, I just wrapped it up 
and rolled it like a jelly roll and then I put it in in a Ziploc bag and I put it away for 24 hours. After the 24 hours were over, I then opened it up and washed the yarn and then I let it dry and that became this. Then I was wondering going, a lot of the color came out, quite a lot. So I was like, I watch a lot of chem knits on, on tutorials on YouTube and she didn't do uh, steam setting or heat setting her tie dye. She said it, she didn't need to, but once I did, I did the next colorway and I did heat set it and it made a huge difference to, as to the amount of the tie dye that left. So the next one I did, I had to, oh, I guess I do have to. So I skeined up this one. You've seen this one on my podcast as well with the purples. And then I rolled one into a ball or into a cake. And uh, this one I steam set. And look at the amount of color that stayed in these, these two. So it, the steam setting. So all I did different after I rolled it into a, into a ball, I let it sit for 24 hours still. Then I put it in my dedicated uh, dye pot, so I don't use it for any food, and I put it in the steamer basket for 30 minutes, and I let the steam get it, let it cool to room temperature, and then I washed and dried, it hung to dry, and I got quite a color difference, so I was glad I did that. So then, I did some more with, what did I use tie-dye? So I have on a book in a book here what I did for each color. So maybe we'll start with that. Dying yarns. Okay, so for this guy here, this one here, what did I do? Hmm. Forgive me if it takes a second for me to figure it out which colors are which. Because I try to, okay. So this color here, what I did was I schemed, these were all pre-soaked too, by the way, pre-soaked in salt and water, rain water, for 24 hours before I dyed them, all of them. So this one, what I did, these are the <coughs> same, I apologize, <coughs> somebody's walking by and they're not supposed to walk on the sidewalk apparently. Um, so what I did is I wound it into a skein after it's soaked and then I put it in my dye bath, which was also just rainwater, a fresh pot of rainwater and dye. I put in writ dye. I use writ dye for cotton. You can use the writ dye and it says cotton right on it, or you can use, uh, the, what's the other one? Ooh, the tie dye. So there is acid dyes out there for cotton as well, but I don't own any. So I use the writ dye and I put in the blue in the pot, just one teaspoon in, a, in two liters of water, which is eight cups. And I just soaked it and then I turned it after about 10 minutes, turned it over to get more of the dye absorbed. Then I took it out and once it cooled, I unraveled it and I laid it on my saran wrap that I have on the counter and I speckled it with some uh, red tie dye. Was it red tie dye? Yeah, it was just red tie dye that I speckled it with. So it turned out really, really pretty. And because I used the heat, I didn't need to heat set this, but because I used the tie dye and I wanted it to set, what I did was I just put them both after I used the tie dye. I didn't let it sit 24 hours though because I was just speckling so I didn't think it was necessary. So all I did was I rolled it up in the saran wrap and I steam set it over another pot of one of the ones I did. Like if I had something underneath I just put it on top. I know some of the stuff could leak through the saran wrap but that was the chances I was willing to take so. 
it just saves time and it saves energy because not my energy but energy for the electricity energy so that's why i did that now the that's the way i did a, the next few this one here i did the same idea i wound it into a skein i dyed it with the uh, light blue and then i untwisted it and then when it cooled down i twisted it again and then i put in some dark dark blue into the pot i didn't take the light blue water out and i retwisted it and then i got these so you could see that it's there's more deeper colors in there and that's from the retwisting that i did and i did the same but i did a different color so the bottom color was the blue and actually the blue i did the whole skein so i put the whole skein in i didn't twist it at all for these then i let took it out and i let the skein cool down to room temperature i twisted it with my fingers and then i just left the twist in and put um the wine dye wine color in the pot and i put the two of them in and then just kept kind of turning them over so they were saturated and then when you open it up it's kind of kind of striped in a way but kind of variegated as well so that was those ones this one here let me oh this one here is really different i'm trying to think of what i did with this one i'll put this one aside i don't remember oh i did three of those the blue with the purple skein um i'm gonna do the one oh i'll put those aside i'll do those after i i'm trying to i wanted to read what i had for notes here maybe i okay yellow green red okay i talked about that one so this one is more all blues right this one's all blues dark brown i'm sorry if i'm talking out loud i don't know how to edit on my phone i'm using my phone today so that's why i wish i had made better like uh better notes i have it circled all the colors that i used i'll get back to this one i might have some that i might just be able to show you and not uh, talk about it okay so this skein here i guess it was the same kind of way i did the um, the same way i did the pink and then i twisted it and then i put purple in it as well and then i took it out and i laid it on saran wrap and i used purple powder the, it comes in a box of writ dye and you'll see right there all the speckles that's from the purple writ dye in the box and I just sprinkled it on. I you let it sit for about 10 minutes, then turn it over. If there's spots on the other side of the skein you want to speckle, you do the same. And then you wrap it and then heat set it. I'm not sure if you had to heat set it or not, but I just did just in case, just so the color absorbs. I did four of these because this, as you probably all could tell, was my favorite one that I did. So I did four of those so I can probably make myself a summer tank top. Oh, I love this color. Love it. Love this color. So I was finished that. Then I was like, I'm going to do some more. So I did, oh my goodness, do I only have two of these? I guess I just have two. I thought I had more of this color. So I did the same idea, but I did with brown and green twisted, and then I speckled with brown. Okay, so I made brown speckles. I used salt, and you could use coarse or fine, and I put some just some drops of rip liquid dye and mixed it with a toothpick 
and then I sprinkled that to use for speckles on top of my cotton after you don't want to speckle before it I've I tried it and it kind of washes out so the best time is to use darkest colors as you because so they show up and also speckle more heavy than you think you want it and heat set it as well so here's my next one i think this reminds me of chocolate mint chip here are the lots of speckles yeah you can see the speckles there such a fun color too i thought i did four of those though I also did some yarn mops as I went. So what yarn mops are is I just have maybe about 10 to 15 grams and I left of a ball or something and I have it skeined up and I have it in a one bowl that I just used to dye. And what I do is when I have powder or dye on my fingers or a utensil or anything that I'm using, I just wipe it off my fingers or the utensil on the yarn mop. And these are the colors that I came up with. So these are just yarn that would have been just tossed away. Or not yarn. It would have been dye that was just washed down the sink. So there's that one. It's like a teal, like a robin's egg blue kind of, and a gray. Then I got this one here that's pinks and purples. Don't mind my nails, guys. They kind of like all broke the other day. And got a little nail polish left on them from... Yeah, I wear gloves during dyeing, but for some reason, I guess the sliding inside the gloves was wore out the nail polish and my nails, apparently. Here's another one with some pretty, pretty purple and yellow and black speckles. Some red in there. And then here's a really interesting one, too. This one kind of reminds me of a dirty, I don't know, dirty, dirty colors. It's like not the prettiest one, but it, I mean, it's usable to make something. Then I did something called, oh, what was it called? Oh, I had some, whatever was left in the, say I'm dying the blue one and the and I twist up the skein and I let it sit in there and I have the blue left in the water. I didn't want to waste that because see, it's not like acid dyeing, acid dyeing, all the color, the water should be clear. All the yarn should suck up the color. The writ dye doesn't do that. So I had color left in the bath water. So what I did is I drained it into a two liter bottle, Coke bottle, and I'd write the color on them as I went. So I did that for a couple weekends. So I took for the first one, I have a big Costco jar, four liter jar of pickles. We go through a lot, a lot of pickles. So I keep them and I call these my yarn pickles because I use the pickle jar and I use that leftover water from the writ baths and I put layer in three different colors, but I take... 50 gram skeins of cotton, of handicraft or cotton, or lily, lilies and cream. Um, and I take the label off. I use it right in the ball that it comes in. And I shove three balls in the bottom of the pickle jar. And they're sitting side by side. So I pour in on the first ball, like I tilt the pickle jar, pour in. Like I poured in for the first one, I poured in some green. Twist the pickle jar. Pour it in on top of the other one, some wine color, pour it in on top of the last one. I think it was the blue. And then I tipped it up really nice and carefully so the, it stayed in kind of layers or sections. And I let it sit in the jar for 24 to 48 hours. Then I took it out of the jar and I, which way did I do it? I heat set that in top of a steamer basket. Then I let it cool to room temperature. Once it did, I wound it into a skein so that I could wash it and dry it. But I decided because I wasn't sure if the heat got right inside the balls, like right to the middle, I decided when they were in skein form to heat set it again in the steamer basket. So that was twice that it was heat set. 
and then let it cool to room temperature and then I washed and dried it. So here's my first yarn pickles with the colors I had mentioned, the blue, a little bit of the wine color and the green. The green didn't really show up that much, but the blue sure did. That turned out so pretty. So these are my yarn pickles. Then this next set was three different ones. They all come from the same jar, but they all look a little different. They're very pastel-y. I put in the green, I put in the wine, and I put purple in. So you can see that there's th three different skeins, and they all look a little bit different. Like they all have the same colors in them, but like this one has all the purples mostly, but this one has more green and blue in it. And then this one has a little of both. So they turned out it, it would make a nice little fade, but yeah, these are some more of the yarn pickles. Now, I just have one more container guys. And then I'm trying still to remember what these two, how I did these other two. So the next two I have, I just basic, I put the water, two liters of water, which is eight cups of rainwater in my pot. And you start off with like room temperature water and you want the yarn in there as the heat gets up. So you're not damaging the, the yarn. So you put your one table, one teaspoon to two teaspoons. I use two teaspoons in the yellow you're going to see one teaspoon of the green and then you put your yarn in and then you turn the temperature on and you bring it to a, like a low 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 boil and I left it in there for about 30 minutes 20 to 30 minutes or so to bring up the color so here's the first one yellow so I use two teaspoons of yellow in the bath water and then you'll see some speckling um, where can I show you some speckles here right there just a few speckles. This is an example of me not putting enough speckles for it to look as nice. So I learned from that, but all I did with this is I used liquid writ dye. I put it in a little plastic throwaway container. I used a toothpick and after, uh, even while this was still hot from the pot, I laid it out on the saran wrap and I dip the toothpick in the writ dot, black writ dye and I put dabs of it all over the skein and flipped it over, did the both sides. And then I rolled it up and I steam set it. So, and then I come out with that. But I learned from this that I need a lot more um, toothpick marks in the whole thing for it to really show up. So that was the yellow. And here's the green I did doing that. See, I, noticed, I knew I needed to do more of the color, so I did a lot more of the dip dipping and including it, so there was a lot more speckling action going on. A lot more spread on this during the heat set. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I like that. So that the, was the green color that I put in there at first. So next one is, I thought... I loved that other purple that I did, but I love this purple equally. What I did with this one. Okay, so I'll show it to you first. You'll see some red in there, specks, some blue, all different specks, right? So what I did with this was I just started off with the wet, wrung it out from the rainwater and the salt, put it on saran wrap, and I sprinkled black powdered writ dye and purple powdered writ dye. That was it in those. Okay, I sprinkled pretty heavily. Now the black broke and I've got some blues and reds and oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. The purple broke a little wee bit to get a couple of teal spots, kind of that idea. And then when I wrapped it in the saran wrap and steam set it, the color bled a little bit, which I love because then there's not as much white spots in it. Oh, I like this too. So I thought this would be lovely even with 
if I run out of yarn with the other purple set, this would go wonderfully like as a fade for the other set as well. Now I did two that were just pretty well just blue. I just put blue in and I, oh, I know what I did differently with this. This is the blues. You might be able to tell it's a little bit variegated. I don't know if you'll be able to tell that with the lighting. Um, how I got that was that I put them in the water, the cold water, and with no dye in it. And then I just took the dye and I mixed it with a little bit of water in a cup that I used just for dyeing. And so one teaspoon and then I mixed it up and then I poured it just kind of in a figure eight in my pot so that some of the color was hitting other places more than others. Like it wasn't wound into a hank. It was just a loose skein. And so it was hitting and going into different places randomly. So maybe this spot was more white, didn't get as much color because I didn't stir. This place here was really a deep, deep blue. So I had all different variations in the pot. It turned out nice. It kind of reminds me, looks like blue jeans, honestly. I think you could see the tonality there. So yeah, really pretty if you like blues. Um, this one here, I'm trying to remember what I did. It has to be tie dyed. Yes, it was tie dyed. Okay, I'll show you the color first. Look at all the different colors in there. Red, yellow, turquoise. So this I tie dyed um, with tie dye powder. So I took, did I? Let me think one second. Did I use tie dye powder or liquid tie dye? Um, no, I used tie dye powder. I sprinkled a bit of the tie dye powder on and I used a mask. I used a mask and I sprinkled a little bit of each color, flipped them over a little bit of each color, leave them set for 24 hours. And then I steam set it the next day after I wash it. And when I steam set it, the, a lot of the colors went and bled a little bit into the yarn. So it wasn't as white. So I got a nice, uh, kind of a light, light blue undertone because of the, the blue, I think it was probably from the blue tie dye going into the yarn more. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did with this. Oh, I think I remember. Okay, so this one, what I did with this one was I put in the dye bath um, a very, very dark blue. And I wound this into these into cakes. And then I let it sit in there. But then in the middle of the cake, I put about a teaspoon of black writ dye. And yeah, it was blue. Sorry, it was blue writ dye in the center. When I say dye in the pot, it's, it's like I don't tie dye into the pot. And I put black in the center and I just let it sit. And then once it was in there for about 30 minutes, I took it out. I let it kind of cool down. And then after uh, it was cooled, I wound it into skein form. And then I washed and dried it. Did I wash and dry it? Yeah, I didn't need to steam set it because it was in the pot anyway. And when I wound it, all these, like, it looks so variegated. It looks striped. I'm not sure how it's going to work up. I can't wait to use this because it looks so interesting so interesting and the last set i did both using the same colors this is really interesting so here's a set of four and you're gonna not believe that they're the same colors i apologize my skein winding was off point when i wound these into skein form i kind of 
well, I got my COVID shot and my arm hurt and I wasn't doing very well of winding the skeins and I was excited to wind them. So I wound them best I could with a really sore arm. So what I did was these were both using wine, like Rit Dyes. Was it Rit Dyes? I know I have this in my book for sure. Um, tangerine, which is like an orange color. I used the wine color and I used dark green. Then I used, uh, for the first one, this these ones here, the darker, I used the, the long metal pots, the steamer pans. I put that with just a little half inch of water, rainwater on the bottom, and with no dye in it whatsoever, I laid out the skeins side by side, two of them, and then I squirt um, the writ dye on like there was writ dye and uh, some water mixed together and I squirted it into just different sections and random spots and I found it got a little muddled together but it made a beautiful outcome but I took the same colors because I had half the colors left so that's the tangerine wine and dark green and I decided to try on the countertop method so I laid saran wrap out and I did the same idea. I just put the colors all different random places and then I steam set it. And this is what I come up with. So it went from this in the pan, but by the time the 30 minutes were up with the colors spreading and everything, the color, like it wasn't as bright. And this one I got from the countertop method. But I'll tell you, it took me an hour and a half to, to, to get rid of the color out of these skeins. An hour and a half. And that's, so I had two sides of my sink. I had one skein in one, one in the other. And going from, while one tub was filling, I was in the other one and up and down and up and down and trying to get rid of the color so until the run color run clear it was one and a half hours for each colorway that was a lot of work but i love this how this turned out love it so i want to dye some more like that so yeah i should look, look to make sure i covered everything i think i did um yeah, really, my favorite ways to do the dyeing were um, the yarn mops. I loved the yarn, how the yarn mops turned out. I loved the pickles. Um, it was a lot less work for the pickle one, honestly, because you threw it in the jar after you ripped the label off, and then all you had to do was wind it into a skein after. I did heat set it twice, but I really don't think you have to. I think once would be sufficient, not a problem. I loved the colors that come and that I didn't have to waste the the dye. Like I was doing something with the, that leftover dye. So I really enjoyed that. And um, any speckling. I loved the speckling and making the speckles with the salt was awesome. I haven't tried with sugar. I don't have any sugar in my house. So I want to try with that. But the Rit dye sprinkles worked great. The powdered... Um, tie-dye works lovely just make sure you have a respirator mask when you're using that and some safety glasses that would be very helpful so um i think that's it if anybody has any questions with cotton dyeing at all you ask away down below i don't mind answering any i i've been dying for about four weekends straight like from good friday till easter sunday night I dyed cotton yarn. My husband bought me like all kinds of cotton to, we bought the stores out in town here before it closed. We didn't know they were going to close, but now we can't buy anymore. So I haven't been able to dye any 
any of this last two weekends. But my future endeavor, I will be buying some acid dyes and trying my hand at dyeing some wool. So I can't wait to start that journey. Uh, it's just a kind of a money situation where you need the money up front to buy the wool and the acid dyes. So I'm going to pick a couple of colorways to purchase the colors that I want to try at first. Just try my hand at that. So I'm anxious to try that. And, and if you want to know, uh, watch me do any of the dyeing, let me know. I'd love to know if you would like to join me along. Maybe I'd even just press mute and have do a voiceover kind of because it is kind of hard to have the big setup with the camera and stuff filming and then hoping everybody in the house is quiet my husband was, might be watching tv he might be doing some renovations in the house so there's going to be lots of in and out sounds the dogs might be barking the bird is usually chirping so there's lots of noise going on so i think i would rather do the voiceover after so but if anything interests you, any questions, whatever, just let me know. Sorry, I'm starting to ramble. So I will let you all go. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the yarn I dyed. And I appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out of your busy, busy schedules to watch and to show you, watch me show you all the yarns, all the yarny goodness. So, and all the beautiful colors you can get on cotton that, who knew? Who knew you could get cotton to look so darn beautiful? So until everyone, until everyone, until next time, everyone, I hope you're all safe and have a great week ahead of you. And I'll be doing my weekly podcast next week because I have three videos that I'm recording today. So take care, everybody. Bye for now.